Lucy is uh, has some issues inside the house, and I think they're related to her thinking that she has the same authority <laughs> as her humans. And we've kind of gone over some things to help with that. Lucy, sit. Good example of passive training. I didn't tell her to sit, but when she did, I rewarded. I don't have to give her a treat for that. I would just pet. But one of her major problems is she is aggressive on the leash. We call this leash aggression. Sometimes it's not even aggression. Sometimes it's just fear. I don't know who you are. I don't want you near me. And so I'm going to act all tough to get you to move away. So what we want to do, uh, I got this technique out of, uh, and then I've morphed on it, but I have a mentor. Her name is Karen London. She has a book called Feisty Fido, Solutions for the Leash Reactive Dog. My technique is based somewhat on that book, and I've had my own twist to it. Now, if you have a dog that is leash reactive, I'd suggest you pick up the book. It's real easy to read. It's a short read, and it's very effective. <laughs> Basically, um, dogs learn through association. <laughs> we talked a little bit off camera. Now, um, if she sees another dog coming towards us, I think she thinks in her mind that she is either protective or possessive over humans. And so if she sees another dog or person that she perceives a threat, <laughs> she starts getting aggressive towards them. And she has a little bit of a demand bark. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, so basically what we've done is we introduced a focus exercise where we're teaching her just to look up at, at us in the face. And we want to practice that inside till we get to the point where we can say focus wherever, whatever's going on, and she'll sit there and look at us in the, the face. Come on, Lucy. Let's cooperate, sweetheart. Sit. There we go. So what we want to do is once we've got the focus in, inside the house, then we practice it in your backyard. Because now we have all sorts of different distractions outside. Now, when we were doing this inside, Lucy, even inside, was very distracted. So we're using a leash just to prevent her from moving away. And that worked out great. Um, Lucy, come here, sweetheart. Down. There you go. All right. So what we're going to do once we've established the focus, we can say focus and the dog stops and looks, whatever they're doing, and look up at us. We've, and we practice inside and then outside. Then what we want to do is we want to find a location where we can kind of control the environment. The ideal situation is a place where there's a path that a lot of people walk their dogs on. Now, usually after five o'clock after work, everybody gets home, they change, they take their dog to the dog park or wherever, this sort of path place. Now, what I'd like to find is a situation where I have a triangle of vision in front of me. I can see here, but I can't see here or I can't say there. So like the, the path is basically passing par parallel in front of the camera. And let's say that there are some trees over here that obscure your view, then there, there's a clearing and I can see the, the path up to here and then there are more trees obscuring that view. So what we want to do, and once we find that little triangle of vision, is I want to find a distance that, that Lucy can sit and look at the other dogs. Now we're going to do a little bit of counter conditioning for this, but what we want to do is if she can't sit, or if I put the treat in front of her mouth and she's looking around it, then she's saying that I'm too close to those other dogs. Now before I get into this, one thing also that matters is the energy of the other dog. If the other dog walks by and it's an old dog and it's walking in a heel, not, not bouncing, not, not doing anything, it'll be a lot easier for her to deal with. But if you get a young dog like her age that's doing this sort of behavior, barking and pulling a leash and rushing, that's going to cause Lucy to be more reactive. So we want to take into account the, uh, the energy of the other dog. So let's say that we're walking. What we're doing is I'm going to put, uh, she's standing on the left side or the right side when you, when you heal her. On your right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I would, in this purpose, I'm just going to leave her on my left, but I have her on my right, and I'm looking this direction. Let's say the traffic coming down the path is going this direction only. So as I can see, somebody's coming with their dog, and they're about to come into our view. What I do is I pull out a treat like this, and again, she would be, well, on this side, she's going to be here. But, Lucy, sit. So what I do is as soon as that dog is about to come into, into view, I turn my field of vision here, and I'm watching the dog. That's a good focus. Now what I'm gonna do is, as soon as she sees the dog over here, she's gonna do this. She'll like lower her head and start staring. That's the first communication. I'm uncomfortable with what you're doing. As soon as she does that, I'm looking at her. I'm gonna wait like about two or three seconds after she sees the dog. If she doesn't look up at me automatically, then I'm gonna say, focus, Lucy. Focus. Now, again, by the time we've done this, we can hold her focus for up to 20 seconds if we've worked up to that inside. So basically, when the dog comes, I'm going to give her an opportunity to look up at me. If she doesn't, then I'm going to say the word focus, and then I'm going to do the focus. Now, I'm going to take as long to deliver that treat as it takes for the dog to pass completely. So by the time she gets the, the treat and turns to go and yell at the dog, the dog is gone. So we're going to keep on doing this. Now, we're going to have to find the distance that she can sit there. 
So like if we were at Hart, uh, Hartman of America Park, uh, there's that path there. There'd probably be a good place to find for that. So basically, uh, when you find that, you're gonna keep on walking her away until when a dog's walking down that path, you can have her sitting and taking the treat. So once we found that distance, then as people are walking by, I, as soon as I see, notice that they're coming in view, I look at her. As soon as she looks at them, then I give her the, the focus command, she looks up at me, hello. Um, once she's done that enough, eventually you'll get to the point where she sees the other dog and before you say focus, she turns and looks up to you automatically because we've conditioned her. Uh, I'm gonna have you wait right there. Um, so um, basically once we get to the point where when the dog looks up at me automatically, Karen calls this an auto watch, I'm gonna call it an auto focus and I've changed the word to focus. You should reward the dog handsomely. So I'd pull out five treats and be like, focus, focus. Focus. You want her going, what do we call this? A jackpot. She's going to be like, what did I just do? I just got the mother load of treats. But this, we're rewarding that because she voluntarily, we've conditioned her, which you see another dog, if you look at your human, your human will hook you up with a treat. So we keep on practicing at this distance until you get five auto watches in a row. So every time a dog comes, she stops and looks up at you and ignores the other dog. Now again, we've, we're doing this at such a distance that she doesn't perceive this other dog to be a threat at all because it's just too far away. Once we've gotten five auto watches, let's say we're at 50 yards away from the path. And once we got five auto watches in a row, then, then, then we would call it a day. And the first time you get an auto watch, that should be the highlight of your day. You should end the exercise on that one and let her give her the five and then be done. Eventually, when you get five in a row, then I'm, next time we do it, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna be at 49 yards. I'm gonna go one step closer to that and I'm gonna keep practicing that until I get five auto watches in a row at that distance. Then I'm gonna take another step. Now this is gonna be take a lot of time, but this is something that will fix the problem forever because she will start to associate when another dog comes around, if I look up at the human, my human will reward me. Come here, Lucy. Um, if I protest and freak out, then, or if she does, we've pushed it too far too fast. The idea is we want her to go through this whole procedure without ever reacting at other dogs. While you're doing this, when you're on a walk, if you see another dog, I would immediately go around a car, a shrub, a house, turn around and just go the opposite direction. Walk at times of the day or in locations where you're low, you're gonna have a low percentage of seeing other dogs. Dogs get better at anything they do, <laughs> including aggression. Come here. Sit, down, down. So what we wanna do is, again, we're gonna progressively get closer and closer to the other dog until we get to the point where the path is right here and she's sitting there looking at me and ignoring the other dog that's walking by. So once we've gotten to that point, then we can start applying this technique and really when you're about five feet away, you can probably start applying this technique when you're walking. Now let's say we're walking down the block and we see a dog that's approaching us and we've mastered this technique or we're, we're well on the way to mastering it. Well, right here, this is, might be too confrontational. So what I might do is, I, if this is the sidewalk and here's the street, I might walk with Lucy into the middle of the street if it's safe, and then why would we keep walking? So we increase the distance between her and the other dog. Now then what I would do is, as we're getting close and the other dog's about to approach, then I would give her the watch exercise. Now this time we're not stopping and doing the watch exercise, we're doing it as we're walking. And this is why when you are walking and there are no other dogs around, every once in a while I pull out a treat and be like, focus. And then I said, should say focus instead of watch. So focus and then take two steps and then give her the treat and say focus. Same way we're doing, but we want to incorporate that into a walking moment or a movement. And then eventually we get to the point where the other dog, we have, we have taken away the fear because we gradually got closer and closer to the other dog. And then when the other dog approaches, we just give her a focus. She looks up at us and watches us as the other dog walks by and she's not even paying attention to the other dog. Now this is, has some elements to counter conditioning in it, not quite a, conditional, a traditional counter conditioning exercise, but she's young enough where I think that this will create a positive enough association for her so that she feels less threatened, combined with the rules and structure we talked about incorporating in the house. Now in the meantime, um, she, she goes to a hangout with uh, a relative who has a Doberman. Come here, sweetheart. Sit. Oh, what a good sit. Um, so uh, that's great socialization, but she's young enough we would like to find her other dogs where we could let her play. Now, does she have aggression towards other dogs when she's off the leash? No. So I would definitely start taking her to dog parks, getting her as much socialization experience as possible while she's still in her formulative years. Once we get to the point where she's a certain age, she's not gonna be so inclined, just like us, we get grumpy man syndrome, get off my lawn. 
And so we want her to just yeah, as much social practice and positive as possible. Now, you could, if you can sneak some treats into a dog park when she goes up to another dog or has a good encounter with another dog or the dog's approaching, pop a treat in her mouth while she's watching the dog approach. But if she's reacting, we do not want to pet her or give her a treat when she's reacting because that's, if I pet her right now, I'm reinforcing this anxiety that's manifesting as a, as a whine. So this is how we can use the focus exercise to help the dog feel better about being approached by another dog or a human.